Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and this, of course, is Shackleton the Explorer. He's uh, my trusty uh, sidekick, or vice versa. Maybe I'm his trusty uh, sidekick. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to talk all about the brutal, the brutal uh, cold snap that is uh, that that many people in the United States are enduring. The uh, as you know, probably the Arctic is warming much, much faster than the rest of the planet. And uh, that lowers the temperature gradient to the equator. Okay, and uh, because of that lower temperature gradient, there's uh, less pressure difference. And therefore, the jet streams are moving more slowly and they're much wavier than they are. So the ridges are going very, very far north of the wave and the troughs are going very, very far south. And what we're happening is we've got the, almost the entire US is in the trough of the jet stream. So it's getting brutally cold temperatures and lots of snow. And that situation is likely to persist um, for at least another number of days. And it's brutal. I mean, it's uh, very, very cold temperatures, far below zero in regions where people don't have adequate heating and the power grids have failed uh, in many places. So we have over 5 million people without power. There's over 150 Americans that are being uh, severely, well, that are being affected by this, um, this, this cold. And it's directly related to climate change, the warming of the Arctic, the, the slowing and waviness of the jet streams, which has been wreaking havoc on weather patterns, causing extreme weather events uh, around the planet for many years. And I've been, I'm sending a warning out there. I have been for a long time that um, it's only a matter of time before we have multiple crop failures and global food shortages as the Arctic continues to warm and have less and less Arctic sea ice as we head towards the Blue Ocean event, as there's less and less snow cover on the land in the Arctic. So the Arctic is becoming darker. It's not, it's not reflecting as much sunlight. Um, and there's all kinds of feedbacks um, which are causing accelerated warming at much greater rates than the the global average. So let me show you the uh, data first, and then I'll talk about some of the consequences. So if you Google uh, climate reanalyzer and just select uh, the daily summary, then here's what we get. This is the two meter temperatures and so on. You can just mouse down here. This is the two meter temperature anomaly. So you can see the extremely cold regions here and extremely warm region here and look at this is in, in degrees celsius so look at the scale we've got we're going all the way from you know minus 32 celsius to plus 32 celsius these are the temperature anomalies okay so the difference is relative to a 1979 to 2000 baseline so tremendous cold here because there's a strong trough covering this entire region and there's a strong ridge in this region where the warm air is going up high into the Arctic. Okay, this is, uh, let me go back here. Uh, okay, so this is a, a view here. So we see this um, North American cold area. And it's also, we, we also see a similar one, much, actually a larger area one over covering um, Northern Asia, parts of Europe. Okay, so we see this widespread thing happening and we saw a similar thing happening um, last year, but not to the same extent, at least in North America. Okay, so if we go to Earth Null School, I'm looking at the air, so just Google Earth Null School and click on Earth to get the menu. We're looking at winds at 250 millibar. Okay, and you can see the jet streams there. Now I've centered this over, this is no, over North America. Okay, you can see North America here, and you can see this huge trough here. Now, I'm going to cycle back a bunch of days, 
and then we'll go forward. Okay, so okay, so here the jet stream over North America is mostly uh, zonal. Okay, there's not a big dip here. This is uh, February 11th, and then we'll go through a day at a time, and you can see the um, you can. This is the third the 13th this is february 14th four, whoops i'm cycling through three hours at a time february 14th and you can see this ridge now or trough here okay it's it's very narrow it's not covering the whole u.s now but if we, as we go forward okay there we go right here look at this tremendous tremendous uh ridge covering the breadth of the whole country if we look at the, uh, so here we're, we're looking at the air, the surface temperature, okay? And what you can see here is, um, you can see this tremendous um, cold over North America. Of course, if you click on regions here, you, it tells you the temperature in degrees Celsius. If you click on the unit, you can change to Fahrenheit. But look, right now it's extending down to about 28 degrees north here. Um, extending far down into the Gulf of Mexico and and the Mexican border. Uh, on the other side here, you can see it's also going down to just under 30 degrees latitude, 30 degrees north, and over here uh, at 45, and over here it's about 40 or so. So it's extending much further. It's elongated, and you can also see... Um, Parts here where the temperature is above zero is the green, extending up to north of 80 degrees latitude. Okay, so this is a powerful ridge and this is a powerful trough and persistent trough. Okay, um, this is the, uh, I, I'm looking now here at the sea surface temperature, the ocean sea surface temperature anomaly. Interestingly, you can see that the, the trough over the U.S. is so deep and so far that it's cooling the water on the surface of the ocean just off the coastline. And in fact, this water here, look at these temperatures here. Uh, there's a region here that's almost minus 8.6 degrees Celsius is the temperature anomaly. If we look at the actual absolute temperature, it's um, about 10 degrees Celsius, the water temperature here. Okay, so that's extremely cool. It's about, like I said, it's about ten. It's about ten degrees Celsius. The water here is ten degrees Celsius instead of twenty. The anomaly is is uh, minus ten. Okay, so this is uh, this is actually this is a really good indicator that the uh, the event that we're seeing right now is persistent because it's lasting long enough to to cool the uh, surface of the ocean. Okay, um, so we're talking about the coldest outbreak in over 30 years. It's smashing records, some relief by next week, but it's still, it, we're not out of the woods yet with this. And this is just a weather map. Um, one of my favorites is Wonderground. It's called the Wonder Map. You, you can just Google it and find it. And there's all of these different menus that you could select the radars. So we've got the um, okay, so we've got the, the fronts, the cold front extending down here. It, you can see where the, where the, uh, snow is and et cetera, and you can play it, play it down here. So it's an, it's an excellent resource and you can see the temperature of different stations here. Um, and just, uh, zoom in on things, etc. Okay. So it's a lot, it's a very good, um, resource. Okay. So, uh, so let's talk a little bit more about some of the consequences of what's going on now. So let's have a look here. So, you know, on Facebook and Twitter, I post a lot of uh, relevant articles. And this was uh, Blackouts. This was a Forbes article just today. Blackouts in Texas and California teach a hard lesson. It was just, uh, it wasn't that long ago. It was just a few months ago when California was in a massive heat wave. There were lots of blackouts and, uh, you know, it was uh, power. There was lots of problems there from the heat. Okay, a few months later and now 
you know, in Texas, we have this, and across the U.S., we have this massive, um, massive uh, cold outbreak. Okay, so you can read all of the details. It's affecting millions of people. I think there was something like, like uh, you know, the California blackouts were modest relative to this, but they got a lot of press. It was about half a million homes and businesses losing power at the height of the blackout for between 50 minutes and 2.5 hours. Texas, however, is suffering from an unprecedented loss of generating capacity, with early reports pointing to roughly 30 gigawatts of primarily gas-fired capacity offline, representing more than a third of the generation capacity of the state. It's the lone state in the lower 48 with its own power grid has limited ability to import power from neighbors, so they can't import power to make up for the uh, deficit. So the grid's basically, you know, teetering and uh, collapsed in large parts of the state. How bad is it? Well, this is a site, just Google poweroutage.us, and this is, this is a, a site that you see. So this shows the power outages across the country. The red is greater than 100,000 outages. And if we look in Texas here, 4.186 million people without power. This was last updated at 2 p.m. today. Uh, three hours ago, this number was 4.5 million. And the total in the country was over 5 million. So there, you know, there, there's fluctuations in that. So there, it's heading in the right direction anyway. But it's, it's, there's loads of people in the U.S. that are being affected by this. Winter, New York Times, winter storm barrels across huge band of U.S. There's some good images here, and I'll just go down to some of them. Okay, so this is a map here. Below freezing temperatures in nearly every state in the U.S., Okay, the only re regions that are above freezing are 32 Fahrenheit, zero Celsius is parts of California and uh, down in the Florida region and some of the uh, southeastern states here. Um, low temperatures below zero degrees Fahrenheit in this whole region here. Okay, this is real extreme bitter cold here and between zero and 32 in these other regions. So, so basically the entire country is in a, an ice box. It's in a, in a deep freeze. Um, there was a couple stats here. I didn't see it. Basically 150 million people are being affected. U.S. cold snap. Why is Texas seeing Arctic temperatures? Okay, so I've talked about the polar vortex. I've talked about the jet stream trough um, and uh, these troughs becoming more persistent, right? The jet streams slowing down and becoming wavier are causing extreme weather events around the planet. It's, they're causing increases in the frequency, severity, and duration of these extreme weather events, and we're getting events happening where they never happened before. So the cold down in the deep south um, is just, they don't know how to deal with it. They can't, and, and the power grid's gone. So it's, uh, you know, it's teetering. So, you know, it's a catastrophe there. Um, there's all kinds of images here. Um, yeah, so, so those, are the, those are the key points. And this article here, I want to show you, how is Arctic warming linked to the polar vortex and other extreme weather? This is from a year ago, this article. And let's just look at some of the, the key figures here. Arctic sea ice extent trending rapidly downwards. This was a year ago. This is a climate reanalyzer from a year ago. So you can see the cold area here and here. And remember to compare that to this. This is this year and uh, this is uh, last year. So it's extending deeper and it's more severe this year. And it's, it's affecting huge numbers of people. But this is going to be a pattern for a, a while in the new climate normal. There's no new climate normal. We're undergoing abrupt climate change. Some of the feedbacks are shown here, but I just want to show you, uh, I want to show you this image. So if you have a stable polar vortex, you get mostly zonal flow in the jet stream. As the Arctic warms like crazy, we're getting warming, warming of this region. The jet stream slows and becomes wavier and these troughs get stuck and we can get these massive outbreaks of cold or heat. Thank you for listening.